So, but Nebraska to me has always been the album that is, um, it's very, very powerful and I like it. It may be my favorite Springsteen album actually, um, precisely for its stripped down sound. What was going on there? It's the scariest record Bruce ever made, I think. Mm -hmm. It's also, he says repeatedly, the most autobiographical record he ever made. That was his record about that house on Randolph Street. Mm -hmm. You know, and certain lines repeat. I remember when I was in college, I was listening to that record right when it came out, and, and, and I was reading along with the lyric sheet. And I just thought, you can hear this whole record, you, you can understand this whole record simply by listening, by tracking the last lines of each song. And, <coughs> hey ho, rock and roll, deliver me from nowhere. It's, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, that line about my father's house, where our sins lay unatoned. Um, and all those songs sort of conclude in that same way. It's that same haunted sense of looking across the road to an empty, abandoned house where something bad has happened and you can't quite put your finger on what it was. You know, or looking, you know, that, that image in uh, Mansion on the Hill of the two children, he and his sister Ginny, hiding in the cornfield watching other wealthier people having fun. And the interesting thing about Mansion on the Hill is that his, his, his wealthy, you know, once he got out of the can, Anthony Zarelli went into a whole array of other like, uh, real estate and insurance. And he got, you know, lost his license to practice law after having violated it so clearly. And um, the house he bought for his daughters to live in and that he eventually moved in that was called the House on the Hill. And it's an English town, just a little ways outside of, of, of Freehold. And it was, it's not even that big or an elaborate house, but it was on quite a bit of a piece of property at the time. And I think Bruce and his family really sort of saw that as kind of a heavenly environment. But his grandfather lived there with his you know, second wife and then I think a third wife, and I've never really heard them talk about ever being invited up there. But he was living this weird, high, inexplicable high life where they didn't see a lot of money, but for some reason foreign dignitaries when they came down the West Coast would pay their respects to Mr. Cirilli. I do not know why, and no one's telling, which makes me suspect that there are depths there that are yet to be accounted for. But that record is all about that feeling, I think, of being completely disenfranchised, being sort of just beyond the fringe of society. And that's why when you listen to Nebraska, which is supposedly about you know, Charlie Starkweather going berserk mm -hmm. in the Badlands with a shotgun and an underage girl <laughs> on his lap, it's like, that's you know, Bruce's Starkweather. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that was Dave Marsh's uh, observation. 